But you know, I've been wavering back and forth what I want to do with this tank. My original intention was some sort of a farm tank. I was going to put substrate in and plant directly into it. Things changed, and I think you already know that <coughs> based on the previous part of this video. When I set it up the other day, I ended up putting uh, all, all cycled water and a cycled uh, uh, sponge filter, uh, and I dropped in, I don't know, eight or ten uh, uh, fancy guppy small ones and I think it was five blue dream shrimp so anyway there's turns out one of the blue dream shrimp on that rock so I'm still gonna use it for some sort of a farm tank I thought I'd drop this log in piece of manzanita with these boosts of philander on it they're growing they're they're not and there's the the ram's run snails all over it um, I don't know if they'll do better in here or not I've got guppy grass in here uh, so what I'm gonna do uh, a couple days ago on Amazon, I ordered this box. I think there's 24. Yeah, uh, five times four, uh, 20 of these, uh, I think they're three inch terracotta pots. So, and I've got this used substrate. So I'm gonna use that in these terracotta pots. And I'm gonna harvest out all of these um, kind of Doris, the uh, uh, Amazon swords that have been growing off of the runners. And then I will put those in this tank down here. Because yesterday I also came home with, a, I think, 11 auto sinkless. And uh, they need something to eat. So I put these rocks in from, from uh, this tub. And they're covered with algae, so that'll give them something. Uh, and they can feed off the sponge filter as well and that log. But still, uh, they'll be able to feed off the plants, and that'll be a real benefit them so I will show you just how about how I go about this so the first thing I'm gonna do is pick out some of these kind of Doris and I may as well start with this one here let's see the runner connects to this big one back here I'm just gonna cut that whole runner off some plants you can uh, you can prune with uh, fingernails but these are really tough really fibrous All right, there we go. And then, let's see, a lot of these are rooted. So I'm gonna uproot them. And I'll show you those once they're up and out. I put a piece of wood over it with a java fern and I just knocked the java fern loose. So there's one. It's a bunch of uh, dwarf water lettuce that came out stuck to it and some jungle val but this is make sure we can see this that's one uh one piece here of uh this amazon sword kind of nice huh so i'll cut these up into individual pieces in fact, a couple of these, like this, I think I can divide into two plants right at, at the base here off of uh, this stalk. Remember, this was a flower stalk. And at one end, it created a flower, and then at all the nodes, it, it, it created these little plantlets. And there's this one branched and a whole side shoot. So there's more of these in here. pull this one too this is coming off of another the idea is just to kind of you're still going to pull up sediment that that just can't be held but what i'm doing is is slowly just wiggling it out so i don't tear it out of the ground or the substrate i'm not worried about damaging the roots i'm just trying to keep the mess down to a minimum so you can see a lot of the a lot of the stuff coming up out of the 
out of the substrate. This tank's been set up about a year and a half now. So, and let me uh, find the scissors here, and we'll cut this one off at its source. So there's some really nice uh, swords here. Kind of a gift that keeps on giving. This runner was older than the other runner, hence the much much larger plant. All right, so there's a view on this one. This one's kind of tattered. Uh, not sure why. It could have been the Plecosaurus is chewing on it, but that probably will just detach. It just detached really easily. So I've got a really nice one here. If I had a bigger pot, I might just put it in it. Now I'm very, I, I'll, depending on the pot size, what I can find here, I may just uh, do a root pruning to about here, uh, clean up these couple rattier leaves, and then uh, it'll go down into that pot also. And then we can see here, there's another one. And it should just separate fairly easily, there it goes, off of the flower stalk. That's two. And this one should also just separate. There are no roots forming off of it, just a couple little small ones. So I'm going to do this one a little different. I'm going to leave the stalk, and I'm just going to cut on either side of, uh, get rid of that, on either side of the plant, and leave uh, a little bit of that stalk intact. That'll be fine. So there's three. And then uh, this one looks like we might be able to get two out of it. It's got nice roots coming off both sides. Yep, so there's there's one. That's four. And off the other one. And hopefully that'll encourage uh, the mother plants to do that again. There's another one, really nice long roots. I think that was five, six, I don't know, we'll count. And then I'm gonna come back to this. Uh, some bigger ones here. That one, as they get older, more mature, they detach really easily from, uh, from the stock. There's one. And also one. There's some roots that stayed behind. And I might try something with those. Uh, I might just pull these out and put them in a pot and see if there's a new, uh, any more vegetative growth that'll come out there. Um, on this, it looks like there might be three. Now that one just tore away. I don't think that's going to do anything for us. Nice one here. Um, another nice one here. a couple more here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to try and separate these out. I think I might just plant. There's, you know, it's kind of a, a call. Um, no, it's separated out and it's got a root on it. Um, if one of the little offsets looks a little too small, not well developed, leave it. And just plant it with the other one. You can always come back and divide them, you know, months down the line, year down the line, whatever. So anyway, I've got a lot here, and I don't didn't count these two out. So because they're not really well developed, what I'm going to do is same thing. I'm going to cut the stalk out and and leave the stalk in between the the shoots here. A 
like this and I'll plant that. And same thing with this one up here at the top. Cut the stock out, trim the other end of the stock, and there's another nice piece. So let's see what we have. Two, I'm not gonna count that one, just um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's all. I'm just going to count that as one, twelve. And then the big one here is thirteen. And I'll show you what I do with them. All right, so working on my little uh, rolly cart. I've taken some API root tabs and I bust them into, into quarters as best I could. They're not perfectly even, but you know what? No, no worries. And here's the terracotta pots. There's uh, 10 of them. So I will pull out the others. So I, there were 13 plants. There's two that are stuck. There we go. And then I'm going to do these one at a time. And we'll start with this big one. We'll see if that'll even fit in one of these pots. That's going to be a tight squeeze, but you know what? I'm going to go for it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, pull off some of these uh, damaged leaves. They're, they happen to be some of the lower leaves as well. And... Uh, That's probably good. I don't need to remove them all. And then, uh, um, you know, there's a drain hole in these, and obviously drainage is an issue, sarcasm, because we're putting this thing at the bottom of an aquarium, and it's going to be totally saturated. So they, they just come this way because they're really intended for, you know, like gardening, for maybe putting a little succulents in or something like that. And so I'll just stuff a rock, a little piece of lava rock over the hole, because otherwise... This sandy mix is just going to sift right out. And, and in here is, uh, there's sand, there's gravel, there's uh, fluval stratum. So I just dropped a little in and just to cover the bottom. And I'm just going to push that one in and sift sand around it. I'm going to drop one of these API root tabs in there. Um, the one thing when you do this, because it's dry, the substrate that I'm using is bone dry, uh, a lot of it's going to want to push its way out. So sometimes, not a bad idea to have a bucket with some water in it. And. Uh, You take a little of the water and just sort of pre-wet the the substrate in the pot. Otherwise, it'll just flush out when you drop the pot into uh, into the tank. So often, what I do, I'll, I'll set these in one at a time. Now it's pouring out the bottom now, so that's good. When I set these in the tank, I spread my fingers apart, both sides of the plant. And, and kind of hold it in place and set it down in the water. And I'm going to do that with this one. I'm going to take you off the tripod so you can watch how I do it. I don't want to leave these out too long out of the water. They've obviously been growing completely submerged. So hand over it that way. And I'm just going to still see a few bubbles coming up. I'm going to set it right there. And that's the first one. That was the big one. All right, so remember, grab a pot. Put some, if you need to, the holes are really small, so not, not a lot sifts out. And then grab a plant. Let the roots dangle down into the into the substrate. 
or into the empty, essentially empty pot, and then put some gravel or some sand, some medium around it to hold, to anchor the roots all the way around. Piece of the API root tab. Um, go ahead and fill it up the rest of the way. And that's it. And I'm just setting them into a bucket of water for right now to, uh, they'll start sucking moisture up. Kind of kill two birds with one stone. I'm wetting the sand uh, just because it, it'll pack a little easier for these small ones that really don't have any roots, like this one. So I'm running it with the, the sand right to the top, make a little hole, and just sort of uh, anchor it that way. So essentially, that is it in a nutshell. Not too bad. For uh, the initial investment was probably, oh God, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks, 10 bucks per plant. I think they came in those tubes from uh, the, what are they, Top Fin from PetSmart. And, uh, and then the pots. Um, Gosh, I can't remember how much I spent for those. Uh, I think they were about a buck a piece, maybe a buck and a quarter a piece. Um, so all in all, not too bad. So uh, that's uh, 13 of them. And, you know, if they get all as big as the one in the back and as well rooted in the terracotta pots, I uh, probably get $10, $15 a piece for them. So that wouldn't be too bad. Now I know it's gonna take a while. Now all those little pieces of root tabs, the roots will find the nutrients. That's what they do. Uh, and, and they'll grow. And you know, theoretically, the smallest ones here, it could be a year before they're of a sellable size. Or, or you know, also what I've been doing, uh, I've got a whole bunch of crypts up here, right, that, uh, Let's see, there's three or four tucked in there. And also, there's these crypts tucked in here, right? There's, I don't know, three or four there, not counting that pink flamingo. But they were all in pots like this. So I just bought a couple of the plastic pots and there was clumps of crypts in each one. I divided them out into these little, they're about like 1.9 inch terracotta pots. And they've been sitting in these pots for a while, and they are very, very well rooted out. In fact, uh, let me show you. Let's take one. We'll take one of the smaller ones. Well, we'll take this one here. How's that? This is another crypt in front. I can't remember the species, the little tiny ones. But here's one. Look. Roots coming out the bottom of the pot. All right. And uh, let's just... Uh, Depot this, unpot this, de unpot it, and I'm going to grab uh, by the top. In fact, usually I don't do that. Um, we'll just set it in the bucket here because there's some water in here, and it's easy just to uh, shake it loose that way without tearing the root ball apart. But you can see they've got a really nice little root mass. Right, they're winding around the bottom of the pot and the one root there by my little finger came out. 
of the bottom of the pot. So this will go back in a pot or maybe I'll just stuff it in the, uh, in the, in a tank like this one. Why not right there? Hang on. And when I do that, um, I don't use the, the tweezers cause, uh, um, with, with those roots, it, I find it's just easier. So when I, what I got to do is get rid of these guys cause they're a pain in the butt and they bite. Look, go, go. He's just a real, so I'll, I'll wrap my finger around it. Here. I'll wrap, wrap my finger around it and then just push it down into the substrate and I turn my finger down under to anchor the roots. And that crypt is not going anywhere. And you saw the stuff that came out of the, the substrate. That's all going to feed it. All right. And I love crypts because they just suck up nutrients. So, so do Amazon swords. And that's probably my favorite thing about a lot of the, the monocots, the crypts, the uh, swords, the uh, Sagittarius, Subulata, they all just soak up the nutrients in the tank. Um, so it's, they're good to have. I really, I really like having them. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of how I do the whole um, farming thing. You know, uh, it's easy to make more of a lot of these. And then you can just spread them out in your tanks or, you know, you can put them on the market and give them a sell. You know, a nice feature about doing this too, about separating plants from one tank, putting them in another. So they are just chuck full of beneficial bacteria. Um, and this tank, you know, you all know is relatively newly set up. Um, so it certainly couldn't hurt. And I'm thinking it'll help the, give these little autosynclists something to feed off of. That was part of, part of why I jumped on doing this right now. And I just saw the shrimp go by and it'll give them something to feed off of as well. So anyway, I uh, appreciate y'all looking in. Let me know what you think about the process. Um, and if you do anything like this, and uh, if you've thought about doing anything like this and didn't quite know how, hopefully this helped. Uh, it's really a, uh, you know, it's one of my favorite phrases, dead simple. It's really a dead simple project. So give it a shot. And uh, thanks for watching.